Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Have you ever said this to yourself? Boy, I'd love to have an interior designer, somebody to just redesign the living space that we're in, come up with different colors, different patterns, different layout, all of that. It's a fantasy, but it's one that's easily (laughs) attained. And what's involved in that? What's it like to work with an interior designer? I found one and then found two. It's like the best of both worlds right here. Two is better than one. And they are co-owners of Realm Design Co. Hannah and Caitlin join us today on the program, offering a lot of insight on working with an interior designer. Welcome back. How are you both doing? Thanks. Good. I, I really feel that many people would love to work with an interior designer, but it's one of those things where it's like, well, I've never done it. So yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not even, I'm not even going to go there. It's not necessarily about the expense. It's about the fear of the unknown that I don't know how to do that. What do I, maybe I need to provide a lot of information. This is out of my wheelhouse. I'm uncomfortable about it. So can we look at the process when somebody works with both of you? First of all, do they work with both of you? I guess that should be the first question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is a great question. Um, So we... We do work together on all projects. Um, One thing to note that is different, every design firm has a different process and they have a different team. Caitlin and I are co-owners, but we both have different roles in the process. So we've always found it really valuable and kind of the best option for the client as well to get both of our expertise. And when we come together, that's usually um, creates the best product and the best experience for the client. And so um, we do have uh, services that range for every person. I think just like you you mentioned, it can be intimidating to even um, maybe admit that you need help. <laughs> A lot of people, I think because HGTV became popular and DIY stuff became popular, yep. a lot of people just think, oh, it should be something that I, I can do myself. I should be able to mm-hmm. do it myself. And then they start a project and quickly realize how involved it really is to dive into it and to get a product that you're thrilled about and that check all of your boxes that you need. And um, and so just explaining to people and showing everyone that we have created so many different service offerings for every budget, every client, um, location, doesn't matter, all of those different things with technology now, we can really um, work with anyone. And we want it to be something that's approachable as well for for any person. Mm-hmm. I'm going to press the pause button before we get back into the process <laughs> of it. Do you both ever have differing opinions when working on a project? Definitely. Yep. Yep. Hannah and I, um, I'd say we're pretty aligned overall. Um, we've kind of grown to, I could tell you what Hannah would pick out of a um, arrangement of items and she probably could tell you what I would more lean towards, but um, we, we do differ sometimes and kind of go back and forth of what the best option is. And I think, I think that's beneficial because it, everyone has different opinions and it kind of brings different perspectives and ultimately will get us to the best, um, decision in the end. I completely agree. And I look at it this way, like we have different personalities. So I may be looking at a living room and thinking, you know, go with stripes. Vertical stripes would really look great in there. Then a part, another part of me is like, no, splashes of color. Splashes. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop that. For you, the two of you might have that same view, but because you work together and have for such a long time, you're going to blend it for the mm-hmm. perfect the perfect outcome. I think it's 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 the best it's the best situation you could ever have. Really, definitely, yeah. So back to the process. Now, somebody talks to you about what they're looking to achieve, their goals. Do you get a feel for what their design vibe is? Number one. Number two, do you sometimes identify that that's not really what they want? They think they want it, but it's not really what they want. Um, Yes. Uh, I feel like, again, going back to you, the popularity of certain shows on TV. We, there was a time where everyone thought modern farmhouse. That's what I want. That's what's popular. That's what I'm seeing on TV. And thanks chip. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, there's absolutely space for that, but I think um, it kind of made people not understand the being able to differentiate the different styles and the different elements. And we, we like to joke around that we're, 
part-time designers, part-time marriage therapists, because we get mm -hmm. husband and wife come in and one likes super modern, clean lines, very minimalistic. The other likes eclectic and colorful and lots of character and interest. And so it's our job to be able to hear both sides of that and then create a blend that feels appropriate and also um, cohesive with each other. You know, you kind mm -hmm. of just like you were describing where Caitlin and I meet in the middle and create a design. It's you have both elements and both are necessary for for that completed vision. So um I think it's giving clients the language to use and giving them mm -hmm. visual options to show them, okay, when you say modern, this is what we're describing. Here's mm -hmm. a visual. Is that what you're seeing? And giving them the opportunity to then um, be like, oh, no, actually, I hate that. That's not what I yeah. think of when I say modern. So there's a lot of that kind of introductory conversation and just learning about each other and then going from there and then creating a design from that. That's that, that, that's a great point because modern farmhouse, I may be seeing one thing. You, hmm. Hannah, you might see something else. Caitlin, you've got a different definition of modern farmhouse. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm sitting here, you know, my friend showed me something online or whatever. And I'm thinking, no, it's this. And you're like, what are you talking yeah. about? That's, that's, <laughs> you're, Steve, that's minimalistic <laughs> modern. Yeah. Like, what are you, where yeah. are you going with that? Uh, totally. so, so yeah, so I guess that's that's the equalize everything, get everybody on the same page. Um, where do you go from there in the process when somebody works with you both? Yeah, so we always start with the those concepts, those visual images, get everyone on the same page, kind of get the style moving in the same direction. Um, and then we, well, so we offer a few different services, right? So um, we offer video sessions. That's that just one time or as many video sessions as you want to sign up for um, our time with both Hannah and myself kind of reviewing um, in our full service design projects. though, that's kind of where we start with those visual images. Um, once we get everyone on the same page style wise, which way we're going, um, we do 3d renderings of everything. So we draw your space up um, to scale in 3d we implement all the materials, all the lighting, all of the fixtures, furniture, um, and present that to clients. So we find that that's really, really important. Some designers don't use 3D renderings. Um, personally, don't know how <laughs> you explain um, and kind of get that full vision design across without them. But um, we think that they're super, super helpful to really get everyone nailed down in a good direction before um, we start investing money into mm -hmm. big, big spaces like that. Let, let's talk money in terms of budgeting for a project. How is that? How is that best done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the way that we would price out a project is we'll do an initial call. And a lot of times they'll either a client will share um, a real estate link. They'll share photos and videos, some kind of representation blueprints um, things like that. And then we'll be able to, based off of our prior experience and the projects that we've done, we provide a flat fee cost for our design service mm -hmm. associated with the scope and then the size of the space as well. Um, there are variations to that. For example, we're doing, um, there's always the one-off project. Like we've done a TV set in Dallas before. We've done a podcast studio set um, we've done an Airstream design where someone was completely ripping out the inside of an Airstream. And so there's always variations and it's fun for us to get creative, but um, we're typically able to provide a price just based on the scope and size of the, the room. And then that helps with the client being able to budget saying, okay, design fee I know is X dollars. And now we piece it all together and they have a solid plan. It's not I think the fear that a lot of people have is there's just an hourly rate and kind of similar to an attorney where they don't know how many hours are we talking five hours? Are we talking 75 hours? You know, when it's just mm -hmm. going off of an hourly cost, there's a big unknown. And when you're talking about a budget, that can be scary. Um, mm -hmm. So we came in with a flat fee cost to kind of eliminate that fear and give people a structure, a tangible number to just build off of. When it's a more detailed or intricate renovation, do you take care of that budget or make those suggestions? So, for example, oh, you want an island in that kitchen? All right, well, that's going to cost this, typically what it's going to cost. Uh, if you, you know, renovate the bathroom, pulling everything out, putting new stuff in, countertop, blah, 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 whatever, 
Do you also identify all of that as part of when you're working with somebody? Definitely. Yeah. So we, we have a ballpark idea. I mean, every space is so different depending on the style you're wanting, the, how like the high end of, or the level of, um, quality with the materials that we're selecting. Um, so we can always give people kind of a range that we are seeing in terms of like what your kitchen design is going to cost. Um, but we're very upfront that that could change <laughs> and pricing changes constantly. So we can't give you that hard, fast number. Um, if we have a project that we're working on that we're like, ah, oh, let's just get the contractor in here um, up front. Sometimes we'll do walkthroughs before we even start the design and kind of um, get those conversations going. Um, specifically, if they're wanting to like move, um, move their plumbing or move their gas lines and kind of chat with the contractor of what's the cost going to be for that versus the benefit. And sometimes that's worth it to clients and sometimes it's not. Um, but again, it's kind of like a fluid process. Like once we get pricing back, sometimes we have to make tweaks to the design um, in order to fit within those budget range. So we do our best, <laughs> but with construction, like we mentioned before, um, once you open up walls too, you never know what you're going to find. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, and that's just the nature of the beast. You never know what's going to be there or what's going to present itself or, you know, what you thought was the, um, you know, a supporting beam really isn't that, mm -hmm. you know, oh, somebody did some work, you know, 15 years ago and uh, they didn't get a permit. Now we know why. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can you virtually direct a project that is a little more intricate? meaning, mm -hmm. you know, some construction involved. Yeah. So there are construction projects that we've done um, in different states and it does take um, a lot of coordination, but you know, the benefit of that element is um, for example, Caitlin is in California and San Diego. I'm in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And we have figured out a process that works for both areas and beyond that. And a lot of the work is done virtually. So mm -hmm. Um, like she mentioned, we have a 3D model of whatever space we're working on. And so 99.9% um, .9 of questions that will come up in a construction um, project can be answered based off of our 3D rendering. So if we're talking measurements, if we're talking finish selections or material callouts or anything like that, um, we can do, we can make those decisions virtually. And then also, you know, there are certain meetings that we do uh, prioritize to be in person and we've flown out for those, um, depending on the project, there's, there's different ways that we can go about it. But, um, you know, we try to cater our services the best we can to each project and the needs that they have. Do you always do renderings? We do you very, very highly encourage them. Um, we do some of those um, smaller projects. Um, like we mentioned, the video sessions, obviously we don't do renderings during that. Um, and we've done a few specification projects. They um, We require at least one full room design of renderings. Um, but sometimes clients have smaller spaces that they just need a few furniture items picked out for or some lighting fixtures. Um, and we don't require renderings for those, but we found that they're very helpful and they're definitely, um, they kind of like foolproof the process to a, um, to a degree because you are checking before you do anything. So, and, yes, and going back we to do. what we were talking about before you're seeing, or they're seeing what you're seeing. Mm -hmm, so exactly. once again, equalizes everything and everybody's back on the same page. Maybe in the future we get together, uh, maybe you do a screen share of a before a rendering and an after. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Those I, are always fun. <laughs> I love, I love looking at renderings. I think it's so cool. And then seeing the after and with today's technology, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it looks like you're looking at the, typically looking at the room many times. Yep. Yeah. So design process, what are we missing here? What are we, what are we leaving out when somebody is working with you? Yeah. So um, Caitlin mentioned after we have the renderings and that final design plan completed, um, we can kind of go one of two ways with certain projects where we're just doing specification callouts, like we're choosing furniture or some people come to us and they're like, hey, we like all of our furniture, but we don't we need all the finishing touches. We need artwork. We need small accessories. We need we like to say like the things that make a house a home. Um, and so we can help with all those items. Um, we do offer the services where we can order everything and have it shipped um, to receiving warehouse and or, you know, things like that, kind of more of the full service option. 
Or we can just pass off the design plan. We can send you links and you Mm -hmm. can manage it from there and kind of run with it on your own. We find a lot of people that do our remote project um, service prefer that so that they can either phase it out, you know, uh, budget wise, timeline wise. They can say, hey, let me um, design three rooms and then I can order in six month increments and kind of plan it out myself based on budgets and, and all those things. So um, we find that a lot of people will do that. And then also um, with construction projects, you have a whole nother beast that, that we're opening up where we're talking bids, we're doing walk, walkthroughs, um, we're getting custom furniture, item call outs and all kinds of things. So there's a lot more detail that we we strongly encourage, again, like Caitlin said, we highly, highly recommend that if somebody is doing a construction project, that they don't just try to take the design plan and run with it. Because I think a lot of people just, you know, no fault to their own, they just don't understand the level. Like you mentioned, Steve, before you got an ulcer from the construction (laughs) project that you try to do. And that is so common. I mean, we hear that the stress that it puts people under. And so we try to tell people like, hey, we've done this for enough years to know if you're trying to do construction, keep us involved. Let us help you determine, you know, the subs to work with, contractors to choose. We know how to vet people. Even if we haven't worked with them before, we know the questions to ask, kind of the red flags that we'll hear, you know, based on our history. So um, there's that kind of is a, a high level view of what happens after the design plan is finished. Uh, and I can <laughs> see that some people may look at it and say, yeah, let me get the plans. Let me just, you know, feel them out, get some ideas and then, you know, cut them loose. Why go halfway? Yeah, totally. why, why, why engage interior designers when they're not going to take care of all of it or a majority of it? Because there really, there is looking even at your projects, there's something in the finished project where it all comes together. So yeah, okay, <laughs> you hand me plans, I'm ready to go, all right, walk out, thank you very much. But it's not going to have that pop of, because mm-hmm. I'm not going to find the same items that you found. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't totally, even know yeah. to start. We have some clients, um, our contractor packets are pretty detailed. So we there are specific personalities of clients who can take it and are detailed enough to kind of run with it. But it's usually, rare. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's rare. Engineers. <laughs> engineers, yeah, totally. Um, they, but yeah, it's like, and then they come back and they're just like, that was a lot of work. And we're like, <laughs> yeah. <"Yep." laughs> but that's only one aspect. That's, you know, let's say the construction, the build. That's that's that. Now when it's, mm-hmm. now I've got, you know, four walls, call it that, in this room, the added room. Now what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the furniture store and then I'm going to go to home goods. I'm going to buy this and I'm going to try and hope this goes together. It's like, I am so, remember this moment, so done with all of that. I will never do it again. And <laughs> I'm a firm believer in never saying never. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I am yeah. <laughs> just not. It's just, you know, I look at my place now and I kind of rushed when I got in there and it's like, yeah, you know, it's all right. That's, that's okay there. It's, you know, but do I love it? I love my bedroom. That's, I'll say yeah. that. But why? Because it's got big, big uh, windows, you know, <laughs> it's a huge yeah. window uh, mm-hmm. and it's bright and airy, you know, my living room. It's all right. You know, it's comfortable, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say I love it. And I'm, I'm somebody that likes to love, like I love, you know, my office, my studio, you mm-hmm. know? There was more of that went into me. I wasn't in a rush, but whatever. Um, it, it needs to, from start to finish, that is the right way to do it. Um, mm-hmm. And yes, ulcer, I gave myself one. Backyard project, not even kidding. Can't make that up. Check the medical records. It happened. Um, final thoughts here. Final thoughts on working with you guys. Things to remember, things that, you know, even, even when you wrap up a project toward the end, uh, anything come to mind? Yeah, I was just going to talk about, um, Caitlin mentioned the video sessions um, earlier. I think it's, uh, you know, when we're talking about something that's approachable and something that isn't a lot of buy-in, our video sessions are $500 for an hour for both of us on Zoom. And we give you as much content as we possibly can fit into that hour. So we're, you know, whatever your project might look like, Um, that can include a review of inspiration ideas. We'll send you links for furniture that we think will work. We'll send you dimensions of, Hey, um, you need an eight foot sofa and a nine by 12 rug. Here's a couple options. Go, you know, go check them out. And 
we try to make that service um, as versatile as possible for every client. So whether you're working on a living room or a bathroom renovation, you're trying to do it on your own, or you just are kind of dipping your toes into, do I hire an interior designer? Do I need that? Can you help me look at the plans and understand this whole process? Um, and then also the other people who, um, you know, are 75% of the way there and they just need uh, the affirmation, the understanding of, of, okay, can you just look at what I've put together and make sure that I'm on the right track because I'm about to spend $10,000 here on a whole living room of furniture and I don't want to mess it up. And I want to love it when I, you know, when I get in there at the end. So, um, the video sessions, you can go right on our website and, and choose a time slot. Um, like I said, it's for Caitlin and I both, and we, we love doing those. They're really helpful to people. Um, so we'd love to, to just help more people and, and let people go from there. One thing I, I detect in both of you is you, you're fresh, you have fresh ideas, you are aggressive. And I don't doubt for a second, when you do a video session that every second is going to be used to the benefit of the client. It's not going to be, you know, well, you know, let me take, let me take a moment and let me see if I can find a couch that might work for you. Um, yeah, let me get a cup of coffee. I'll be right. No, you guys are like, bam, 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 which is, that's my speed. Like I want to move it and get it done and get it done right. And you guys, your passion is there and you take it very seriously. You're not messing around. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, I mean, Day in and day out, Caitlin and I are looking at options all over the internet for every other client. And so, you know, you can think of that as like being able to take advantage of what we see every day. So it we can do it really quickly. And because we're now, oh, you're looking for a cream performance fabric couch and an eight foot and you want different configurations. Immediately, I know five different sources that you can go to and I can send you that link. So that's why the video sessions are so power packed because you know, we do this all day, every day. So yeah. it's, it's a quick process. It's like, you've already done the research for the client, yeah. even though yeah. you didn't, you could have yeah. not even worked with them yet. You've already done the research because it's top of your mind. You lost me at the word couch. I don't even know what you yeah. said. <laughs> said. I mean, it's like too much, too much for me to process. Um, how do we, how do we connect with both of you? How do we do that? Um, So our website is www.realmdesign.co. We're at Realm Design Co. on all social media. And then um, direct email is info, I-N-F-O, at Realm Design, R-E-A-L-M, design.disco, C-O. Got it. Uh, 20 seconds left. Any closing thoughts? Reach out to us. Uh, (laughs) uh, Yeah, feel free, whether it's a commercial project, boutique, office, um, Custom home, small room, nursery, playroom, outdoor. We've done it all. We have we have experience in everything. So we're excited about the projects coming. Yeah. Cool. And you know, like I'm gonna steal from from Nike, just do it, but I'm gonna abridge that. And it's just do it right. That's the bottom yeah. line. Yes. Just do it right. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, great having you guys on. Appreciate your insight again, your passion, your energy, and uh, looking forward to next time we talk. Awesome. Thanks. 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 We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.